Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Five, four, three, two, one! Oh boy! <laughs> Welcome to the Magic Kingdom, everybody! W. My friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 475. And I'm here once again, not only to help you have the best vacation experience when you go to the Disney parks, but I also want to bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this podcast, blog, live videos every Wednesday night on Facebook, my books, audio tours, my new 102 Things book, and lots more. You can find everything over at www.radio.com. So as Disney Springs continues to grow and evolve from what was downtown Disney, so have many of the venues which have been there since the Pleasure Island days. One such location is Planet Hollywood, which opened in 1994 amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood royalty like Bruce Willis, Demi Moore, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Jessica Rabbit. Well, recently, the restaurant underwent a transformation Name, theming, and menu. So this week, please join me at the table as we sample the menu, review the decor, and see what at Planet Hollywood has changed and what has remained the same. And remember, don't listen hungry. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week, correct the mistake I made last week, and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. I'm human, what can I tell you? I'll then have more information at the end of the show about upcoming WW Radio events and meets of the month and lots more that's going on over at the site and on Facebook. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. Welcome to Planet Hollywood at Disney World. We're actually goes to Disney World, we should say, and I'm here with Sliced Alone. We have this, we've always said every single time, this is the biggest, this is the biggest. You're right. But, but I mean, this is it's like, the biggest. take the camera, just point it up yeah. that way. Three stories. This is also the first time that I think the world has seen the genius behind Planet Hollywood and the genius behind Disney World come together yeah, that's true. for that's one true. good time. This is true. You have two, and I, I don't use the term loosely, mega creative forces coming together, which is like the ultimate kind of family entertainment resort. We're going to sort of give you an overview, kind of a little tour of Planet Hollywood right here in Disney World. In October 1991, I cannot believe it's been more than a quarter of a century ago, the very first Planet Hollywood opened in New York City, following on the heels of uh, popular restaurant chains like the Hard Rock Cafe, but this one was a little bit different, and some of the the brains and the brawn and the beauty and the faces behind Hollywood included names like Rocky Balboa, The Terminator, and John McClane. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Bruce Willis and Demi at the time uh, as sort of the faces, the celebrity faces behind the Planet Hollywood franchise that spawned, that spawned restaurants that grew around the country and around the world where really it was, a, it was one of the true early immersive dining experiences that when you came in, you came in not just for the food but for the memorabilia and the entertainment that really enveloped you and Way back when, when Disney Springs was downtown Disney, um, there was also a Planet Hollywood here as well. But now, in early 2017, as Disney Springs uh, was transformed from downtown Disney, Planet Hollywood went through 
a transformation, dare I say, a maturing and an upgrade as well. And it is now the Planet Hollywood Observatory. And from the moment you see it on the outside, you know that it is different in terms of the color scheming, the story, and the theme. And when you get inside, this is not your dad's or your grandfather's Planet Hollywood. So tonight, we're here just weeks after the initial grand opening of the brand new Planet Hollywood Observatory for what else? A live dining review. We're going to take one for the team, and we're here for you to sample not just the food and the completely upgraded menu, but really to see how this dining experience has changed. And joining me, not inside the Thunderdome as it is, or what I like to call it, but in what I think is going to, is what not only is one of the most beautiful views in Disney Springs, but what I think is going to be one of the most popular attractors of Planet Hollywood as we sit outside, uh, sort of just above the Stargazer Lounge on the second floor overlooking the springs that are Disney Springs with STK, the Edison, and the characters and flight balloon behind us. And joining me at the table on an absolutely perfect Florida evening is my family and yours. And as always, ladies first, age first. Welcome back to the show, Marion Rose Mangello. Hi. The lovely and talented Deanna Mangello. Good evening. And the handsome, the fabulous, dare I say awesome, Nicholas Peter Mangello. I'm the best out of all of them. <laughs> Look at you just throwing down the gauntlet in terms of, listen, if you're going to throw that out there, man, you better bring it and bring it hard tonight. Because the last time I was here was actually with you. Years ago, you and I came here, I guess you had a day off and, and your mother and your sister were out doing whatever they were doing and you and I had lunch downstairs from Planet Hollywood and I remember Nick when we were here it was it was neat to see all of the cool memorabilia and stuff hanging from the ceiling um, but we remember that it was a it was loud inside and you know while the food is good it was hard to communicate one thing that I noticed it's different <clears throat> in this new Planet Hollywood is all that has changed uh, from the theming and even inside, and I, and I jokingly call it the Thunderdome, but inside sort of the main dome, it is a much different feel. It's a much different vibe inside. and It's a lot easier to uh, communicate in there. So very quickly, you guys have been here, Deanna and Marin, you guys have been to Planet Hollywood here before. As we quickly walked through, and we're going to go in and really sort of tour around and see some more of the very cool memorabilia. Listen, there's stuff from Deadpool up there. There's Planet of the Apes up there. Get your stinking hands off. Spider-Man was out front. I want to take him home. Uh, What do you guys think of the theming of the restaurant compared to what the old original Planet Hollywood was? I think it's much better. It's much, like, it's not, like, there's a lot, like, it's a lot more organized because in the last night of Hollywood, there was just random stuff all over the walls, and now it's a lot more organized, and, like, it's it's themed better, and I love the color scheme more, too. I, I agree. It, it's definitely a more mature, upscale, it's much cleaner than it was before, and that giant, you know, 4,000 square foot, I'll have to find what the numbers are, the, the giant video wall there where they project not just music videos, but these three-dimensional sort of moving pieces of artwork really is beautiful. But, but I love, like you said, Nicholas, the vignettes on the walls that have the glass-enclosed costumes and props from everything from Beetlejuice to Road Trip to Rocky IV. So the one thing that I noticed is the sleekness of the restaurant. So what they did was they came in and they basically... You know, cleaned house, and it it this it's so sleek and clean and classic. The other thing is, is that you come outside here, and it is an absolutely phenomenal view of Disney Springs. So, if you really want a wonderful evening to to be and be at Disney Springs, I mean, it's just beautiful out here. You get such a nice view of all the things that are going on. Yeah, and again. You know, this really sort of showcases just how different Disney Springs... You know, when you get a little bit of a top-down view like this, you almost don't remember what downtown Disney used to look like. And this fits a lot more. I mean, even just the change in the color scheme and the architecture, and now that it has those subtle nods to being an observatory, it sort of fits into, and I think appropriately so, right across from the Edison, uh, of what the, the overarching story is of Disney Springs. Mary, what do you think? 
I really like the new refurb, and I really like the way that Disney Springs looks now. And we're, like, sitting on the patio, and we can, like, overlook all the the new things that it has to offer, and it's really nice, and I'm really excited to eat. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I love the fact that, you know, like the, the original Planet Hollywood, part of the attraction is that it is an attraction. There are the, the props that you see in here and the costumes that you see in here are original to the movie. So when I actually came here, I, I got lucky. I was walking to my car um, at the Orange Garage, and I saw some um, some people standing outside of Planet Hollywood. I said, oh, when do you guys open? And she looked at her watch, and she goes, oh, about five minutes ago. So I went in, and I walked around and did uh, a, a Facebook Live video of it and was really impressed at um, the, 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 the props and the costumes that are here have been sort of updated for a new generation. So you will find classic things from, you know, what was classic in my generation, like Planet of the Apes, but there's also stuff in there from Hunger Games and a lot of new movies as well. It has Superman. You can't go wrong with Superman. Did you happen to possibly see R2-D2 and, oh, by the way, Spider-Man? Spider-Man. The whip? Yeah. Yeah, and, by the way, Marvel's better. And Captain Deadpool. Uh, just Deadpool. Yes. Oh, I'll sh- I will show you. You eat all your dinner. I will show you the secret Deadpool. They actually have a prop from one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Shawshank Redemption. Really? I, I won't even know that. Oh, oh I'm see. so excited. But see, and that's the neat thing, too, is that you can come in and and walk around and, sort of, and, th- and they invite you to do that. They can sort of give you a little mini tour when you come up. I, I love how you're welcomed in uh, at the very beginning and then sort of brought up by somebody, given a little tour. And then, you know, we, we opted to sit outside tonight because it's, it's a beautiful night and really want to sort of take advantage of what I think is part of the attraction. But, you know, you come for the view, you stay for the food, strike that, reverse it. And the menu has been completely revamped from top to bottom. Like, this looks nothing like the Planet Hollywood menu, which I, I will admit was right, somewhat... Oh, thank phone. you so much. Which was... Um, it was okay, and I think that you really came to the old Planet Hollywood more for the the fact that it was Planet Hollywood than maybe some of the signature items on your menu. That has been changed completely, and, I, and due in part because not only has the menu been overhauled and, and, and very much updated, but uh, Food Network, Sh- Network chef Guy Fieri sort of helps bring us down to Flavortown with a lot of his signature burgers and sandwiches. And we'll get to that as we move forward through the menu, which, by the way, is much larger than the menu was before. So I'm going to quickly go through the appetizers, and we're going to obviously order a bunch of stuff too. So they have the world-famous chicken crunch. I want you to just let this sink in. The chicken tenders are hand-breaded with a crunchy sweet coating you know what this crunchy sweet coating is? Captain Crunch. Really? It's not just for breakfast anymore. Oh, delicious. Right? I'll take two. <laughs> of course you would. Look at the size of the nacho grandi, the potato wedge dippers. But I think the signature is what we're going to order, which is going to be the high roller sampler. It has the chicken crunch, Texas tostados, buffalo wings, five cheese dip, and the peri peri shrimp, which are fried and tossed in a... It's a spicy sauce that has, like, chili and herbs and spices on a cabbage slaw. But more importantly, it's served atop a giant Ferris wheel. So as we turn the page, um, literally, I, I think Deanna was going to jump over the table because the, the full bleed, uh, full page, full bleed menu is of the L.A. lasagna. Oh, and wait a minute. Here comes. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, wait, don't touch it yet. Excellent, thank you so much. So I'm going to go through and sort of highlight some of the things on the menu because there literally are two, uh, the six-page menu, there are too many items. There are five different salads, including a citrus kale salad. There are four different pastas, including L.A. lasagna, which I think we have to get. Six chicken, six cheese, chicken, macaroni and cheese. We might have to get that too. Um, Shrimp Florentine. There are... Uh, but the guys, Big Bite Burgers, and there are about eight or nine different burgers, including the Mayor of Flavortown, which has pastrami, Swiss, caraway slaw, pickles, mustard, and donkey sauce on a garlic buttered pretzel bun, primetime American Kobe, the original ringer that has a crispy rojo onion rings, the bourbon brown sugar barbecue sauce, 
cheddar and donkey sauce, straight up with cheese, the tatted up turkey, Morgan's veggie, uh, and a bacon mac and cheese, which is the award winning food. <laughs> Nicholas, you saw that and you're down. I'm getting five of those. Come <laughs> home with me. <laughs> Nicholas, when you see the size of the burgers, I will be impressed if you can finish one. Disney, shut up and take my money. <laughs> um, you can also get this. You can upgrade to a burger-lobster combo and get a whole broil lobster. So that's really interesting because you think burgers, you know, it's a much more casual food. You wouldn't think of coming to Planet Hollywood and being able to pair a lobster with your burger. I am so excited that this Ferris wheel just showed up. And to put a lobster on my burger would be decadent. No, it's a lobster next to your burger. That's okay. I'll put it on top of my burger, too. Um, There's also a bunch of knuckle sandwiches. And I don't mean knuckle sandwiches as in what my my dad used to like to feed me. There is a bird is the word. It's a crispy fried chicken breast, the championship pulled pork, pulled pork, the turkey picnic, which I've had before and it's awesome, a chicken BLT ranch, pimento grilled cheese, and Cajun chicken. And then there's also a number of specialties. And I think this is what people don't think about when they come to Planet Hollywood. I think that you think of burgers and nachos and picky type food, but there is a sirloin steak, filet mignon, filet mignon barbecue ribs, chicken breast, sesame gin, ginger salmon, which I sampled uh, when I was here, which was excellent, lobster fra diavolo, uh, and you could also upgrade to surf and turf. So it's And there's also a grouper and parchment paper, which doesn't sound like something that you would have gotten at the old Planet Hollywood, but you can see it's a much more upgraded... Um, and, and refined menu, and I think it's. You, you, I have a feeling that you're going to start to be able to come here not just for the decor, but for the food. All right, so our high roller platter is here, and <laughs> Marion, she quickly went from taking pictures to digging in. Uh, everything's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, Marion, you have been uh, digging in in like nonstop into the five cheese dip with the chips. Tell me about it. Because I'm obviously not going to be able to have any. This pita non bread heaven dipped in this stuff is like it's like indescribable. It's so good. So tell me about tell me about the the five cheese dip itself. Mm. Mm, mm-hmm. Oh, that was great. You're so articulate. So the five cheese dip is very delicious. It has a lot of artichoke in it. It's not too creamy. So, you know, it's not that, like, really, really cheesy, cheesy dip. And it's very, very, very delicious. Unlike the dip, somebody who is very cheesy is Nicholas. What do you got to say? It is amazing with that, like, gnaw bread thing. I'm going to give you a taste right now so you can taste some for your... So it comes with a basket of um, just, like, tortilla chips as well. Oh, Nicholas, it's a nice, warm, non bread. But listen, let me teach you something. If you're going to give me a pita with some five cheese dip, you don't just dip it in like daintily with your pinky out. you got to get this right. You see how I get it all deep in air, right? Let it sort of drip off there like that. Mm. I'm a wing connoisseur. There's a oh, self-proclaimed wing connoisseur? Yeah. That is my self-proclamation. Okay. These wings are delicious. They're not overcooked. They're not overfried. They're not too spicy. A nice bit of heat to them with the blue cheese next to it. They're delicious. I'm still on the five cheese dip because there's, I love the herbs and the the spices. Not spicy, but the spices that I'm not normally, Nicholas, you ate the rest of my pita. You thief. Um, yeah, I really like this a lot. And I'm a snacker. Um, I like I like being able to sort of graze my way around. So this is a really nice option in terms of having a lot of different things to try at once. All right, so as we make our way around this wheel of appetizer fun, first thing to note is we're sitting outside, and below us they have live entertainment going on, which one of the, is one of the new hallmarks, I think, of Disney Springs, and I love that the fact they have it here downstairs outside in the lounge. All right, let's go around the horn First things first, Nicholas is, is his brains are falling out of his head because you want me to talk about the uh, the chicken crunch first. It is so unbelievably amazing. 
So, look, you've had your share of chicken nuggets and chicken tenders before. What is it to you that makes it different? And I see that you're also dipping it into uh, the sauce as well, that sort of Creole mustard sauce. That, like, thing gives just the right amount of crunch, and it's, like, sweet, but it but the saltiness counters the sweet, and the sauce gives it, like, a nice, like, salt, like, it gives it such a good flavor. I love it. Yeah, man, you're, you're a going to town. It's a party. Marion, what, what do you think? It's really, really good, and I think kids would really enjoy it because... It's like chicken and it's sweet at the same time. I'm not a big fan of mustard, but I tried it and it was pretty good. So that's exactly what I think too. It's a nice alternative to the normal chicken nugget. And that coating is just enough sweetness. And the offset is that delicious like honey mustard that you dip in. And it's not spicy. It's almost like a brown, like brown mustard, like a Golden's mustard. So it adds just the nice flavor to the chicken. Well, I think it's right. And, you, and look, you can tell that this is not sort of the, the, a normal sort of processed chicken nugget. They're hand-breaded. That Creole mustard sauce, you can see and taste the mustard seeds in it. And I think, Nicholas, you made a great point. It's a great balance of sweet and savory and spicy all in one. Like, it's a very, very unique chicken finger, for lack of a better word. But it's still one that I think kids will like. And I think the fact that it has... Captain Crunch on it makes it unique. Nicholas is literally taking mine out of my plate, and I'm not. You literally just stole my my your, my chicken crunch. All right, Marion, what was the uh, what was the next thing you had? So we had the five cheese dip, the chicken crunch. Did you have one of the uh, Texas tostados? Yeah, I really really liked it. I thought it was really good, and it's like it's like a chip, but like a like a barbecue nacho, but not barbecue, but like chicken. It was really good. So it's like a chip with like sour, like sour cream stuff, or like, or like. Well, what's different about it, and I was waiting to see what you guys said, because it's not a normal tostado. It's a crispy gyoza skin with barbecued chicken, sautéed onions, and cheddar and Monterey Jack cheeses, and it has um, sour cream and a really nice, sweet but very tangy barbecue sauce on top. Yeah, the pulled chicken is a nice t- touch to it. So, um, with the barbecue sauce, I liked it. And the fact that it's on the gyoza skin as opposed to like a regular tortilla makes it a, a little bit different than if you were to order, you know, a giant plate of regular nachos somewhere else. All right, moving down the list, did you have a buffalo wing? Who had a bu- you had a buffalo? Wing? I, I, the buffalo wing, as I said, I'm a wing connoisseur, and it's, they're delicious. Nicholas, what do you think of the, of the buffalo wing? I like it. It's it's good. And it's a really nice zip to it. I love the flavor that it has, and it's just a great wing. Recommend recommend it if you come here. <laughs> so what I like about the uh, the wings is that it's the same thing. They're they're zesty enough, but not too spicy that it kills the flavor. Right. It's definitely mild enough, and I look. I love. I just love wings with blue cheese. And celery, I do. I love it, and you know what? They're a nice. They're a nice add to the to the wheel. Well, what I like about this, look, I'm a snacker, so like this is right in my wheelhouse. Like I can see coming here with a family or friends, just getting a bunch of appetizers to share, some drinks, sitting out here. There's live. We are definitely picky. Food. We're not picky eaters. We're picky food people. So the last thing on here is the peri peri shrimp. And this is the the garlic chili spicy served on the cabbage sauce. So have you tried that yet? I have. So I like spicy, but this is really spicy. It has a lot of heat and a lot of kick to it. Um, the nice thing is the bed of coleslaw that it's on, it really adds when you get that big fire in your mouth, it really adds to put it out. Yeah, this it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, it is definitely something that is super spicy. I like it. See, I like being able to come to a restaurant and you get something that, that says is spicy and is not afraid to be a little spicy and to bring the heat. Right, Nicholas? Nicholas, is, he's like, move this away from my mouth. I am still chewing. So not everybody, I think, if you if you don't, I think you have to like, I think you have to like spicy food in order to like the peri-peri shrimp. 
But I think this is a perfect appetizer for a family of four like us because it's a great balance and a mix. Everybody's going to have the thing that they like. So I can go to town on the peri peri shrimp because my kids ate everything else anyway. I can go to town on the wings. Nicholas claimed the chicken and Marion claimed the tostados and the five cheese dip. So it's a really nice mix. Um, and the sampler comes in at $34.99. So we have been eating and eating and eating. And we there's a lot of... it. It's five small plates, but there's a lot of food on here. Like, it's it's... Don't let it deceive you. You know, it's saying $34. That's a lot of food on this dip. And I don't know that we're going to be able to get... I mean, I'm going to do my part, but I don't think we're going to be able to get through everything. I don't think so either, but I just want to add to... I got one of the specialty drinks, and it's called the Moonwalk. And it has blood orange vodka, pineapple vodka, orange and pineapple juice, Sprite and grenadine. It is a nice add to this wonderful appetizer um, wheel. So, good Gandhi, that shrimp is hot. <laughs> that, that, you, take a sip of sweet tea. You drank the whole thing already. Give me a sip of that one. Whew. That'll uh, that'll clear your sinuses out. Yeah, very much so. So make sure that you like make sure you like spicy before you try the peri peri shrimp. So our wonderful server, Shala, just came over to take our, our order. Um, hey, hey, Shala, uh, everything on the menu, look, that's a reference to an old song that nobody is going to get. You, maybe she got it. Um, I know. All right, so do you know what you're having? Lady Spice, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to have the, ba- the barbecue baby back ribs. You want your baby back, baby back, baby back ribs? Marion is going to have the turkey picnic sandwich. Okay. Um, Nicholas? is going to uh, take down the barbecue... Oh, no, wait. He wants the, the bacon mac and cheeseburger. Bacon mac and cheeseburger is an excellent choice. Excellent. And uh, that the picture of the L.A. lasagna... Listen. Right. The, the picture of the L.A. lasagna, which is basically fresh pasta tubes with regatte and bolognese. It's fried lasagna uh, with garlic cream and tomato basil sauce. Let's make all that happen. Right, awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Make that happen. <laughs> so as we're sitting here waiting for our food to come, uh, walk over, over walks a friend from down under. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Katie. I just love the accent. Um, you guys happen to be listeners to the show. You so you said you came to Disney World on your honeymoon. Now you're back here, you you on the on the international college program. Yeah. 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 That's right. So we've been here for about a month. That is awesome. So you guys happen to be sitting right next to us. You just finished. Uh, what did you guys have, and what did you think of it? I had the uh, the Mayor of Flavor Town. It was really nice. I enjoyed it. The pretzel bun was, was something new. It was good. Uh, I don't remember what mine was called, but it had bacon and mac and cheese and tons of other stuff, and it was amazing. <laughs> I think that's all it really needs to have, as long as you have the bacon and mac and yeah. cheese part. And you said you almost jumped over the table to eat. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I had a couple of bites, and she had to sort of grab it back off me. And then after she finished, I was, like, scooping off her plate on the other end of the table. <laughs> See, that's the advantage of being married. You can just sort of reach over and eat some of her food. So, yeah, and this is beautiful out here, right? You know, the views of Disney Springs. Every time I come here, I say how much I love the lights and the trees. <laughs> Yeah. I always say it, and I'm like, I know I said it last time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, it was really nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much, and really hope, hope to see you guys again soon. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you so much, guys. Good to meet you. So our food just came out, and the first thing that you notice is the presentation. And, and Deanna, your ribs are literally served on a mini outdoor picnic table, and they're crisscrossed like four layers of ribs there's got to be two, four, maybe 10, 12, 14 ribs there? Uh, 12, yes, in my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. And yes, they're on a picnic table, so I'm taking it home with me. Nicholas, that, I, I am not kidding. You have a giant head, and that burger is the exact same size. There is literally no physical way that you can get that burger in your mouth. Me and my mac and cheese burger, I'm going to devour him. <laughs> Now, so, look, it literally is a burger with layers of mac and cheese and bacon and onion straws and lettuce and tomato. Yeah, it is. But if you'll excuse me, I have a date with destiny. (laughs) 
And so, Marion, you have your turkey picnic sandwich. This is one of Guy Fieri's signature sandwiches. I've had this one before, and I absolutely love this one. But this, too, it's a big sandwich. Like, the portion sizes are really, like, your eyes, like, went wide open when she brought this out. And the first thing you said was, there's no way I can finish this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. So it's, like, pretzel bun, and, like, it's already, like, cut. So you can see all, like, the layers of things inside. It looks like it's, like, some mayo, some... I'm not quite sure what that. I guess we'll just have to eat it. And what I like, too... You get a little bucket of french fries with it, but if you notice, the french fries are all different. You get, and this, I like, I'm a french fry guy, I'm a potato guy, so you get some potato wedges, you get some crinkle cut fries, you get curly fries, you get waffle fries, you get regular fries, like it's a little mini french fry buffet. Right, Nicholas? <laughs> I am stuffing my face so, with the best burger ever. Wait a minute, Nicholas. That's that's high praise saying it's the best burger ever. So tell me a little bit about what's... Oh, my goodness. You literally are... Well, listen, man, if you're going to do it... And I think you're doing it right, <laughs> Nicholas. You literally have to just sort of bury your face in that burger. Don't let go because it'll just... It'll come apart in your little hands because that is a giant burger. So, Deanna, and listen, you said that you are a... Um, Oh, you're, you're a, a, a something aficionado. Oh, a wig. oh, now you're also a wig. But listen, we come from a, a place where we've we've had some pretty amazing award-winning ribs before. So tell me honestly, how does this compare? So I have to say, the meat falls right off the bone. They're not overcooked. They are cooked perfectly. Very succulent. Very juicy. You actually don't even need. If you want to eat them with a fork and a knife, you can, and the meat comes right off. They're delicious. This is really good. I got the turkey picnic sandwich, and it's a pretzel bun, and there's a lot of barbecue sauce, some, I think it's uh, cabbage or lettuce, some cheese, some turkey, some potato chips. That's the money right there is the barbecue potato chips on the sandwich. Not only does it make it crunchy and a good texture, but it adds to the additional um, the, the, the donkey sauce that's on there. But you got to brace yourself because you must you need to have a really, really big mouth to get all this in one bite. Oh, sister, then you should have no problem with that at all. Nicholas, you've been silent. Um, oh, my goodness. You are devouring. I can't believe it. That bird is silent but deadly. It is the best. So what is it about it? Because I'm looking at because I see that the pickles and the bacon and the layers of macaroni and cheese, like the elbow mac and cheese. It's not just any mac and cheese. It's six cheese mac and cheese. <laughs> so it has six type of cheeses plus the cheese for the burger. So it's like a super cheese and all of the flavors come together to form this amazing, crunchy, crispy, meaty, ultimate burger of deliciousness, but I would warn you, the burger is literally the size of my face. (laughs) Like, it's a, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of burger there, especially for a little man, but you are are going to town. So, did you try some of her sandwich? So it's a really good cold sandwich. Turkey, there's barbecue sauce, the kicker is the potato chips. And the donkey sauce. I like the donkey. So try this. I had the L.A. lasagna. It's fresh pasta tubes. So it's like a large, I don't know, maybe two to three inch in diameter pasta tubes with ricotta cheese, bolognese meat sauce, which you know is like my death row meal. It's fried, and it has a, um, a garlic cream on top and a tomato basil sauce, a really nice, um, rich red marinara sauce so I, I've never had it this way I've never had as if lasagna itself wasn't good enough right. to be able to, <laughs> to think to fry it right oh so your eyes just widen Marion check this out because I think you'll totally dig that so listen we come from you know a, a place where we have homemade sauce at home and pasta is a big thing for us so tell me what you think of this so this is an this is definitely a unique choice because I really never thought to deep fry lasagna. 
Um, because how can you? How much better can lasagna be with meat? You just deep and fry it, right? And now you throw it in a deep fryer. So the pre- presentation is absolutely magnificent. And the tubes, what they fill it with is a bolognese and a sausage, which is not too spicy. There is a little bit of a spice to it, but it actually is delicious. Lots of cheese, lots of cream sauce, lots of tomatoes, lots of basil. I love basil. Really, really good. And you can tell that it's fresh. You know, when I saw fried lasagna, I was wondering, is it going to be heavy? Is it going to be oily? Or which right? Is frozen. Right. It's, it's, doesn't, it's not something from a package, right. which you can tell. It's actually really, really good. I was kind of su- surprised because when I think deep fried, I think like like lots of oil, lots of grease, lots of that kind of stuff. And when I tried it, I didn't expect what I got. I, I expected more of a greasy... It's a light fry. It's a very light fry. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's really, really good. So much flavor, too. I would say the, the fry is almost more for texture and flavor... Right. Than it is, you know, like the, the same type of fry that you have, and I'm stalling because I'm trying to actually cut this with one hand and hold the recorder with the other. No, I got it. Um, so I, I like the sauce. Um, the sauce is so I like my sauce a little bit thicker as opposed to more liquidy, which is what this is. You like a meat? You like a meat sauce? I love a meat sauce. There's a lot of meat in this, which I like too, and there is just a little bit. And look. When I say spicy, I don't mean spices and temperature. I mean the the, the sausage. The flavor, the flavor. There's a lot of flavor yeah. in the meat, which a lot of times you won't get. You know, you order uh, an, an Italian dish at a non-Italian restaurant. It's somewhat pedestrian and a little bit more watered down. This is not. There's just a, enough of a hint. And you're right. There's a freshness that comes from the bagel. Uh, the, the bagel. The, ba- the basil, too. So I'm going to go off um, again on my ribs. Because I didn't, I don't think I said enough about them. Um, the, the barbecue sauce that's on them is is not like extremely sweet, so it adds this zesty taste to these ribs, and they're they're not like smothered in them because they come on this picnic table. They are absolutely delicious. I think this so far was my favorite meal, my favorite. Meal. The ribs, yeah, the ribs, definitely. And I've had a lot of ribs, like Michael Bob's ribs in in Naples, Florida, are the, like probably some of the best ribs you'll ever have. These actually are pretty comparable. Well, and I think this is what having a, a quote unquote celebrity chef like Guy Fieri brings in is that he is going to bring in not just like his signature donkey sauce and recipes, but I think he's going to ensure a certain level of quality and consistency in the flavors, right? He would not put his name on it. And, you know, I think a lot of celebrity chefs would not put their name on it, would it not meet their their standards? Nicholas, did that burger meet your standard? Oh my gosh, Nicholas. I literally just took the burger and shoved it in my face. I literally We should have done a video. Of I literally video. got it on my eyelashes and everywhere because I literally smashed it into my face and it was delicious. Amazing. I listen. Comparable to the best burger ever. I am I am so I am I think this may be the proudest moment as a father that I ever had. Because you just said you smashed the burger in your face so much so that you got it on your eyebrows. <laughs> you gonna finish that piece of burger that's still hanging off your eyelash there, or are you saving that for later? Um, so, did you all? Did, did, did Marin? Did you try a little bit of everything? Did you try? What would you think of the rib? I love the ribs so much. They, I, I'm not a big spicy fan. I have. Almost no tolerance for spiciness, but this was actually really, really good. It did have a little bit of spiciness, like not spiciness, but like pepperiness, and it was a really sweet, tangy barbecue. And just like my mom said, it like falls right off the bone. It was really good. Everything here was amazing. Every, the ribs were nice, and the barbecue sauce was so beautiful and amazing and peppery. And well, I think this is interesting because I think. In the past, when you talked about Planet Hollywood, you talked about what you saw inside. You got the souvenir shirt or the hat. But I think it's interesting that we're talking about the quality of the food and the, the level of flavors that the food has, which is something that the earlier version did not have. I think it's like the food is much, like it has a lot better quality than the last Planet Hollywood. It like there's a lot like it's a lot like 
like a little bit like it seemed like last time it was like it was like processed but this time it feels it's like it's so good and it doesn't like feel like it's that unhealthy like i ate a giant mac and cheese fried <laughs> burger of unhealthiness but i mean that's and, right to the point. i mean don't kid yourself you didn't just drink a protein shake i mean you ate a mac and cheese burger so i think that goes back to again the quality of the chef that they have here representing their food i mean guy Ferretti, come on He's no joke. So his burgers, the stuff that they're going to put out, and also the chefs that are here, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a class act. So good job. It's, everything really, really came out. The present, presentation was great. The food was great. The service was great. So it's a really nice, it's a, and it's a nice night out. Well, and I think the thing, too, when we talk to, you know, the other people who just randomly happen to be sitting at the other table, and this is my second time eating here because I don't like to review a restaurant in the first day or week or so that it opens because I think it's I don't think it's fair. I think that you need to give and we, and we come from a restaurant business. Deanna, you were a server growing up. We, you know, my family owned restaurants very recently. It's not fair to re- review a restaurant the day that it opens on a Saturday night and complain about the service and the quality of the food. You give it a little bit of time so everybody sort of gets acclimated to the process. Right, you got to sort of work it out. So this is now a couple of weeks in, and I will tell you, the presentation of the food is very attractive. The portions of the food, the portions of food sizes are huge. Um, we didn't, I, know, I, didn't even, I don't think I actually mentioned what um, the prices, for example, of the burger was. So just for example, your bacon mac and cheese burger, it's $18.99. Is it the cheapest burger in the world? No. Can two people split that burger? Absolutely. Marion, your sandwich, your uh, picnic sandwich is $16. I think any one of these things is definitely shareable. Like, there is no way. And so I had the turkey picnic last time I was here, and I only ate about half of it. And look at me. Uh, Right. And clearly I haven't missed a meal and don't... What are you laughing at? I think all of this is able to be shared with like two or three people and a wise man once said that is a tasty burger <laughs> you're right hey everyone have you saved room for dessert <laughs> wink wink <laughs> nod nod oh no you guys must be full you don't want dessert do you no we have to try some what are you insane man <laughs> i am insane and i think there's the, the, well the jury's still out on that one so one of the things that is is i think going to be a signature of Planet Hollywood is, is it is a place to come for dinner. It's also a place to come for a wide variety of cocktails. So there's a number of bars inside and out. There are two bars. I think there's two bars inside. There's the Stargazer Lounge outside. And they have enough. The interesting thing that she was saying about the Stargazer Lounge is, is that downstairs they only serve craft beers. So if you're out in Disney Springs and you're shopping and you're, you know, hanging out and you want to go for like a craft beer and just hang outside and listen to the entertainment, it's really nice. Well, they even have some of the bars inside. You can sit up at the bar. So if you want to come here alone or with a friend or a spouse or girlfriend, you could sit at the bar, have a couple of drinks, order some of the cocktails or appetizers or desserts. They have a number of signature cocktails. I won't go through all of them because there are a lot themed after the observatory and the cellar margarita, a stargazer, a mercury mule, a sparkling Sputnik, a rocket fuel. They have some specialty drinks that come in a planet bowl. It's a 45-ounce souvenir glass. Think about the size of what a normal 16-ounce glass is. It's 45 ounces. It's right. It's $27, so you can and should swim in it. They have a Halley's Comet and a solar eclipse. They also have a number of Comet glass drinks. So there's probably 25 or so specialty cocktails. But I think one of the things that really you guys are most excited about are the desserts. All right. Now there's a new host of this show. (laughs) Now it's dessert time. So, no, no. Oh, oh, now all of a sudden everybody pipes up that it's dessert time. All right, Marion, you can do the desserts. I'm going to do the shakes. Okay. So let me, let me, let me do a little. Look at how excited she just got. Mm. Okay. So. Okay. So the planet meltdown. Ready? I'm going to, I'm going to get you so excited right now. Okay. It's like, okay, you know, like on YouTube when you see those like chocolate balls and they like pour chocolate over and it like melts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have one of those with like ice cream in the middle. It's really, really cool looking. 
Can you, would you mind reading a little bit about what the description is and the price? A chocolate sphere melted tableside by hot chocolate sauce to reveal double chocolate fudge cake, fresh strawberries, and whipped cream for $14.99. Okay, this next one I want to try so badly. I don't know if I can, but I really want to. It's the ice cream and gelato challenge. So I get like the Coke station. They have like the same thing, but with like Coke from different countries. But this time you have to try to identify each of the flavors. They give you 12 and they give you a little sheet. And if you get all of them, then you get a prize. And that's $15.99. And the brownie, gotta get over myself here. The brownie sun, the brownie Sunday martini is the, um, it's pretty much just like, imagine taking like a kitchen sink and then like, Cutting it up into four pieces and taking one of those four pieces and putting it in a martini glass and squirting ripped cream all over it. That's what that is. Yeah. And then there's the sticky toffee pudding. Oh, by the way, that last thing was $19.99, but it's, it's pretty big. But wait, to be clear, it comes in a, a, a martini glass that is... It's it. I measured. It's bigger than my head, if that's at all possible. Okay, next thing. The sticky toffee pudding is exactly what it sounds like with ice cream and toffee sauce, and it's $9.99. And then the banana pudding star jar is like, there's like cake jars, except like better with like Nilla wafers, wafers yeah. and like uh, layers of fresh bananas and creamy banana pudding. That's $8.99. And then the brownie cheesecake star jar is brownie with chocolate pudding and cheesecake with vanilla ice cream and caramel and chocolate sauce, which is also $8.99. And then the key lime pie star jar, which is like key lime pie and like graham cracker with whipped cream. And that's also $8.99. It's really, really cool looking. I want it all. So yeah. You, uh, you do love your sweets. Now they also, in addition to the sweets, they also have a, uh, they also have a number of different types of Big Dipper and Supernova shakes. You hold the menu, I'll hold the recorder. Nicholas, take us down to, uh, as, as Guy will call it, take us down to Flavortown with the shakes and Supernova shakes. So wait, the, the Big Dipper shakes, you know, they're sort of regular shakes inside a, a, a ball jar that are $8, but you saw Supernova and your your face just, just lightened. All right, Lou Mangiello, you're not the host of this show in, anymore. I take am. it away. All right. So first, there are Big Dipper shakes that they come in vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. They each have different types of syrup inside the cup. Vanilla has car- caramel, chocolate has chocolate, and strawberry has expl- explaining strawberry. And they all come in at eight dollars. And then they come to the Supernova shakes. Dun dun dun. No one knows what happens to them except me. All right. So read us a description of the three different supernova okay. shakes. So, what? All right. <laughs> the strawberry Big Bang. Start with a classic hand dipped strawberry milkshake. Add sprinkles and top it off with a slice of birthday cake. It's the latest thing in party food from a frozen planet. Which is for all of these supernova shakes are fourteen dollars. Next, I heard this one was like super duper good. Cosmic cotton candy. Start with a hand dipped cotton candy milkshake. Add rainbow sprinkles, white chocolate covered pretzels, and top it off with cotton candy, a lollipop, and a smile as big as the universe. Aww. Aww. <laughs> all right, I don't want lovey dovey stuff. Next. We go into untold territory, chocolate comet territory. This is what killed the flavor dinosaurs. (laughs) Take our classic hand-dipped chocolate milkshake and bombard it with all manner of chocolate yumminess. The, The dinosaurs love chocolate yumminess. And our double chocolate brownie frosting, candy, brownies, and a cookie straw... So, and let that sink in for a second. Cookie straw. straw. Like, that was the neck of the um, chocolate brachiosaurus. <laughs> T- tell your taste buds that they've landed on a good planet chocolate. Planet dinosaur chocolate goodness explosion. 
So wait, did you call the chocolate comet the thing that killed the flavored dinosaur? That may be the best thing I have ever heard. Isn't it? Be- is it better than t- unlimited hot chocolate and cookies? Oh, that was so two years ago. All right, so of the supernova shakes, which one do you want? Uh, I think I want the strawberry Big Bang. It looks really good. Marion Rose, which, which shake do you want? Can I, can I get something from the dessert menu? Uh, we'll see. Uh-oh. What do you want for dessert? All right, so which, one, which dessert do you want? So... Uh, I want the um, the uh, the the um, the one that's uh, all of them. Yeah. Which one do you really want? That we're not going to do the challenge tonight okay. because we've eaten so much food. We're gonna we're gonna waddle home. All right. So I think I want either the Sunday martini, the meltdown, or the toffee pudding. I think. The, which one do you think? Uh, let me see, Deanna. Which what are you gonna what are you gonna? I don't know what I'm going to get. All right. So we're going to do the, the Planet Meltdown. Okay. We're going to do the Strawberry Big Bang. Yeah. Yeah, so the birthday cake. So the birthday cake. Okay. <laughs> you got to get something. You got to get something. Oh, yeah. oh, gosh. That thing is huge. It's enough for, like, for people. Yeah, Do you want the cotton? you want the cosmic cotton? So why don't we do... Why don't we do this? Why don't we do the three different shakes, and right. we'll do the and Planet the Meltdown. Meltdown. Done. Done. Done and uh, oh, to me. I don't uh, Shaw also need a um, a couch and a blankie, please. Absolutely, we awesome. have a few of those lying back there, just in case. Awesome, thank All you. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> I can take. Do you want me to take the menu away? So she just brought our desserts out. I don't think I've seen my kids as excited as like the first time they went to Disney. Nicholas is freaking out that I'm just not letting him drink it. So wait, first things first. We did the Planet Meltdown, which is the chocolate sphere that she melted table side with the hot chocolate sauce. Inside, there's a double chocolate fudge cake, fresh strawberries, and whipped cream. Marion has not come up for, for air since she's brought it over. Marion, what do you think? Oh, my lord. Okay, so this is a little obscene. Seeing all these shakes and chocolate in front of us, like, I can't even. All right, so Nicholas, you have you already started digging in to... Your um, your shake, which has I mean it's not it's no joke. There literally is a giant piece of birthday cake on top of the mug that has whipped cream and sprinkles and what looks to be like white chocolate chips. That is so good. The cake gives it a nice like texture, and the strawberry. It's not like that. It's not like too strawberry like. Oh my god, that's too much strawberry. It's the perfect amount, and like, it's just the, amazing. I love it. Oh, wait a minute. So, that's almost like a strawberry. It's almost like a strawberry smoothie. Dana just jumped up out of her chair. You literally just pulled it out of your son's mouth. It's almost like a strawberry smoothie, and it's held in place by a giant lollipop in the middle. Wow, it's very refreshing. It's not over. Oh, there is a huge piece of birthday cake on there. Okay. It, it is a giant Nicholas chunk. Is Nicholas is eating it. <laughs> I think Nicholas's goal tonight is just not to eat anything with a fork and knife. Just to. Yeah. So I got the chocolate. I, I know you got the chocolate because it, you actually literally have some of the chocolate on your face as you're eating. <laughs> so I'm not a big sweet eater. I like like something sweet after I eat, just like a taste. It's called dessert. Right. No, but not not a whole big piece. So I got the chocolate with cookies and brownies and stuff in it, and it's a really delicious chocolate milkshake. Wait, but on the outside of the ball jar, and, and if you go to my Facebook or Instagram, or I'll post them in the show notes, you'll see that the chocolate sauce outside is encrusted with malted milk balls, M&M, and little itty-bitty-bitty baby Reese's peanut butter cup. Yes, it is. It's all glued on there, so you can eat it off. All right, so now give me, let me, if you can, if you can pull yourself away from that for a second, let me try the chocolate one. Mmm, so I like it. It's also a little bit of a, like a darker chocolate, so it's not super duper sweet. Marion, how was the, uh, the meltdown? Oh, it was so good. It was, okay. You ate the, Marion, you ate the whole thing. By yourself. Yeah, she's yep. a sweet eater. It's oh, melting. she is a it's sweet eater. <laughs> Nick is exploding. 
<laughs> like it's like the ice age, Nicholas. It's like melting. So Marion, so I want you guys to try the cotton candy one. And now you know we're having so many different sweets. Yes. It's it's, sweet. it's super. Sweet. It's a sweet overload. <laughs> you want to talk about? Marin, did you try the cotton candy one? I will. Do it. She's eating a huge lollipop right now. The she giant lollipop. It tastes. Nick. It tastes like a cotton candy milkshake. Nicholas's Nicholas is shaking. His so and there's actually cotton candy on top. Marin, take a sip. Oh, no, no. It's rainbow. <laughs> no, don't eat the cotton. candy. I want you to sip it. I have a name for this shake. The volcanic. Milkshake that killed the flavor Pompeii. <laughs> Nicholas, so you stuff the cake in there and it's overflowing it's like a volcano. So, Mary, what do you think of the, the cotton candy? That's pretty good. Mm. That, uh, like- so, what we're going to do, so listen, I, I really appreciate you giving my kids all the sugar. I'm going to send them home with you tonight. Absolutely. And they'll, they'll be up till 4 or 5 o'clock this morning and then you can just send them off to school. I will be awake anyway, so they can absolutely come home with me. They may not go to school tomorrow. <laughs> so what's, what's, your, what's your favorite dessert on the menu? My favorite dessert is actually the Planet Meltdown. Um, it is, the chocolate is so rich, and the strawberries, it's a great flavor with the chocolate cake because it's so moist, and the ice cream on top. I don't know because my perfect. daughter ate the whole thing. <laughs> like, I have, to scrape, I have to scrape off the bottom to see what's left. And the presentation is, it, you know, it's yeah. fun, too. I like the fact that you guys do a table side. Nicholas is still going to town on that shake. I'm gonna try. He hasn't breathed yet from that. All right, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can pick up from her. Thank you. Mmm. Oh. So. Of all three of these, I, I like. Right. It, I'm gonna drink the chocolate one because it's made from cocoa beans, which means it's beans. It's a vegetable. It's a legume. It's healthy. And it has strawberries in it, so it's fruit and vegetables in there. Um, I think she's right. I like the richness of the, the, the chocolate with a little bit of the sweetness of the strawberries. And I, for the shakes, I think I like the chocolate, cotton candy, and then strawberry. What about you? What would you put them, what, what would you put them in? What? I'm what, having a what? sugar coma. <laughs> and you're also eating the lollipop. She's eating the lollipop. Even their lollipop were good. Okay, so mine is, I'd have to say, the chocolate explosion dessert, then the strawberry shake, then the chocolate shake, then the cotton candy. And mom, I would like to correct you, it's the strawberry birthday cake volcano that destroyed Pompeii. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, Nicholas. Uh, you, Nicholas, you are, I, you don't, you don't have to drink the whole thing, just so you know, because you're not going to sleep, no sleep till... Brooklyn. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> you're too young to remember that reference. But um, you love that, huh? You And listen, you're a birthday cake guy. Like, you like birthday cake. You like birthday cake ice cream. You like birthday cake. Anything that's sort of birthday cake in it. And that is, that's a big shake, too. Like, there's no way. Eat whole burger and then eat that whole shake. Well, I don't, I mean, I was going to say, like, I don't know that one person can finish one of these shakes by themselves. Although size of like a grown man's finger like these straws are like yeah it's not a normal straw like it's i mean the straws are like a diameter of an m&m speaking of which i want to pull one of these little peanut butter cups off the side because how bad could they be since since they're so tiny the cotton candy one is so colorful i love it the the cotton candy is like pastel you're actually pretty much Pretty exactly close. right because right. it's almost a diameter of and you know what it's fun like it's a fun presentation and I think that's you know when you think of Planet Hollywood it was it's a, it was a fun place to go with your family it was a fun place to take your kids what I think that they've added to the what they've added to the fun is the flavor and right. meaning that they finally brought the menu up to a part where you would want to come back for the food as opposed to just coming here as a novelty it's one of those things you're a tourist you sort of check Planet Hollywood off the list I think you know we as locals we have so many restaurants to choose from especially here in Disney Springs which if you listen to the show you know we love this is like this is a theme park to us this is sort of a destination that we go to because of the dining experiences I think Planet Hollywood was admittedly a place not on our radar at all ever you know that one time Nicholas and I ate here was 
the last time. I would come back here not because I want to see what new things are on the walls, but because I would want certain things that are on the menu. So if you came back here, what would you order to eat other than the strawberry milkshake? Would you get? Would it be the burger? Yeah, probably. That I would get for dessert. I'd probably get either the shake or the meltdown. Well, I, I, I would just finish it off with going and shopping and <laughs> and then emptying your wa- and then realizing you spent too much money. <laughs> Well, I, I think what it encourages me to do is, is I would come back here and I would want to try other things on the menu right. because I'm encouraged by what I saw with the things that we tried tonight. I agree. I think, sorry for interrupting you. I was just very excited. Um, <laughs> I think I, as locals, I think that Disney Springs has become one of our more visited places as opposed to the parks because you can... There's always something new because of all the shops and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I love Disney and all the rides. But I think as locals, it's nice coming here and being able to eat and walk and chill. And, and I think it's important that, well, I think it's important, too, that that was the opinion from a 13-year-old. Because for a long time, when this place was trying to find its identity, it was almost, a, other than going to World of Disney, what was there for kids to do? They've really done a, a miraculous job of transforming this into not only a restaurant, uh, a dining destination, but a shop. And I think it's a place that we, like you said, Marion, we like just to come and walk around and hang out together as a family. And eat or, the lollipop. And eat the lot. But we also, but look, this is a perfect place to come for a date night. It's a perfect place to come with a group of friends, right? We just saw Jimmy and his friends who are out here doing exactly that. Sharing some appetizers, sharing some entrees, and here together as friends. I love Disney Springs. Like when it was like old, I was like, like when it was like in downtown Disney, I was like, like whenever like you guys were like, hey, do you want to go to downtown Disney tonight? But I was like, ah, eh, no thanks because there was really nothing for us to do here except like shop, you know, the Lego store and stuff. But they have transformed this place so miraculously. They literally rebooted this whole <laughs> entire place and created a beautiful place with. Awesome food, good like, like plays the shop. It's like, it's like a mall but in Disney, and it's just awesome. I love it. So, I have to agree. The other thing is, is that um, with incorporating the food, um, the atmosphere, and the company makes it all around the best possible experience. And that is why I am happy that not only you guys join me tonight, but you, my friend, the listener, are here virtually with us at the table. I would love to hear from you. Have you been to the new Planet Hollywood Observatory? If so, what did you love on the menu? Share it with me in the show notes over at www.radio.com. Click on the podcast. Leave it there. You can tweet me or Instagram me. I'm at Lou Mangiello. Um, and, and share it with me, or even call the voicemail right here from Planet Hollywood. And again, I think where we are sitting is ideal. Outside here of the observatory, looking out over Disney Springs, I love the live music in the background. It's an environment where you can still be social and you don't have to like yell to talk over each other. There's nice music in the background. Um, really, really, I, I think, well done. And also, I want if you come here, I would like to ask you, what was your favorite milkshake or <laughs> favorite natural disaster milkshake? Did you like the 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 birthday cake volcano that destroyed Pompeii, the chocolate asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, or the flavored dinosaurs, or the, the rainbow unicorn of lollipop <laughs> cotton candy rockets. destruction. I'm not talking to you. Oh I'm talking God, to I'm the sorry. people. The rainbow unicorn of cotton candy destruction. of lollipop land lane. The real name is anything of a natural disaster for this. The tornado that destroyed Candyland. The sugar overload. <laughs> No, the torna- the sugar tornado that destroyed Candyland. No, the cotton candy 
tornado that destroyed Candyland. Yeah, I think you kids should go do a couple of laps around Disney Springs. This way you guys go home tonight. You don't think that we're shopping after this? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, on that note. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining me here at Planet Hollywood. Uh, let us know what you think next time you come and visit. The cho- what is it? The chocolate? All right. The flavor of extinct. The, the extinction. The extinction event. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I want you to start this hashtag on Twitter. Hashtag Astro... Um, milkshake natural disasters of dinosaurs, candy land, and that's the longest. That's a hundred. I know. That's the lo- That's more than 140 okay, characters okay. right there. Okay. Hashtag, hashtag T. I'm not talking to you. Hashtag <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> hashtag Team Rainbow Unicorn Lollipop Milkshake Disaster Amazing Terrible Awesome. We're, we're in the middle of a family extinction event right here, actually. Bye. Bye. Peace. Hashtag flavor It's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World's history or see how well you pay attention to the details, not just in what you see, but sometimes in what you hear, maybe even what you taste. If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online forum for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Before we get to this week's question, let's go back, review last week's and the weeks before, and select our winner. So I admit I had a total mental hiccup last week. Uh, The answer I was supposed to give was to the question I had about who said, after winning the Super Bowl, I'm going to Walt Disney World first. It was, of course, my Phil Simms from my New York football Giants. Um, I had the right winner that I announced, but the wrong answer. So last week's winner got that question correct. I just uh, goofed on the uh, giving the correct answer. So the answer that I gave you was the answer to the John Wayne question instead of the question for the John Wayne question. So you got a free piece of extra trivia. Strike that. You'll figure it out. You know what I mean. I meant to give you a John Wayne question. I gave you the John Wayne answer. I am so sorry about that. I need either more sleep or more caffeine or some sort of magical combination of the two. Anyway, hopefully we are back on track this week. I'm actually going to give you the answer from last week's trivia question, and that's the way it's supposed to be. So uh, if memory serves correct, Valentine's Day was last week, um, and the fact that I say that I'm, wasn't, that I'm questioning when it was takes away the fact that I said that I'm a hopeless romantic. But anyway, I wanted to make this one a little bit tricky, a little bit really challenging for you because I said that Walt Disney World is a great place uh, to celebrate Valentine's Day with the one you love or want to love or even by yourself. Uh, There's so many romantic places and ways that you can spend it, but there's also a location where Valentine's Day is celebrated every single day. The florists there must love it over at Carousel of Progress, but that wasn't the question. Instead, I asked you a three-part question about Valentine's Day in the parks, or maybe specifically in that attraction. So let's sort of recap. The first question I said was at the beginning of the Valentine's Day scene, Father tells us that it's right around the turn of the century, but who does he say is getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day? So as that first scene opens, we can see that it is around the turn of the century. We can hear the sounds of birds chirping in the background, and appropriately enough, Father begins by saying, well, Looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. What year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. That was your first answer, was Robins. The father, at one other point, says he's going to take Mother out for Valentine's Day dinner that night. But where is their daughter going? Well, Father gives us a peek inside Patricia's room where she is getting ready to go to the Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. So I was looking for Valentine's Day dance, horseless trolley, any combination of the two, all these people, I'm indecent, whatever Patricia had to say. And finally, before Father does the right thing and goes out with his wife for Valentine's Day, he needs a drink. And I don't think because he's spending the night with Valentine's Day with his wife, but just because he's thirsty, what is Father in the mood for before his Valentine's Day dinner date? 
Well, with all that talking, he worked up quite a thirst, and he thought he was going to take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for a cold sarsaparilla. Wait, they're drinking root beer now. Same kind of thing, different name. Well, that's progress for you. Anyway, if you got all three correct, or maybe even two out of three, I took all of the correct entries, randomly selected one, and again, last week you were playing because it was a three-part question for the 102 Ways book, all the audio tours of WDW Radio version 2.0, Magic Band cover, stickers, the hot and cold travel mug, and a WDW Radio t-shirt. And last week's winner, randomly selected from all correct entries, is... Wait for it. Adam Warwick. So, Adam, congratulations. Uh, Thank you to you and everybody else who entered. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. Assuming I get it right. All right, so after all the confusion, uh, I'm going to try and keep this one super simple for you and really more so for me. Uh, Mardi Gras is coming up soon, and I want to head on down with you to one of my favorite cities on the planet, New Orleans, sort of. And so your question this week is to tell me, what was the original name of Disney's Port Orleans Riverside Resort? Resort was not, not always known by the Riverside name. Tell me, what was the original name of Disney's Port Orleans Riverside Resort? You have until Sunday, February 26th, exactly at 11.59 p.m. to go to www.radio.com, click on show number 475, use the online entry form there. You can give me your name, your answer, and your shipping address, because again, this week, you're going to play for the book, the tours, the cover, the stickers, and a hot and cold travel mug. So sorry again about last week's uh, mix-up, but good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this week. Thanks to everybody who helped celebrate and really kick off the 10th anniversary of WW Radio with me last week during the live call-in show. Had a lot of fun with that. Thanks again to all of the wonderful wishes on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and uh, via email. Please join me again this Wednesday and every Wednesday night for either the WW Radio Live call-in show or maybe I'll actually be out in the parks. I will link in the show notes this week on how to turn on notifications as I go live, oftentimes not just on Wednesday nights, but like I did this past weekend during a very special sneak preview of the Foo, uh, food and wine. It's what it's sort of. The Flower and Wine, Food and Wine, Flower and Garden, whatever it is, the Flower and Garden Festival. This past weekend, I got a sneak peek. You can find that video over at the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Radio. So please not only like the page, but turn on notifications as well. Please also take a minute and visit the brand new site over at www.radio.com. It has been completely rebuilt from the ground up. It's faster. It's easier to navigate. There are more features and more features coming as well. And also, while you're there, you can also get a copy of my new book, 102 Things to Do at Walt Disney World at least once, free. All you need to do is sign up for our newsletter. You can download a copy of the book. If you already are a subscriber, I will send out a link this week to where you can download it as well. Uh, Again, all I ask is that if you like the show and the book, to please help spread the word and invite your friends to download a copy as well and be part of the ongoing 10-year anniversary celebration that's kicking off this month and I'm going to continue throughout the rest of the year. Also, speaking of going live, I am going to announce uh, on a live show this week, not Wednesday, but on a separate live show, information about my next Momentum event in Walt Disney World. So whether you are a solopreneur, have an idea, have a business, or, or even just want to turn what you love into what you do and follow that passion project This event, which is limited to just 50 people, is going to help make real changes in your life and your business in an intimate, interactive workshop focused on creating real results for you. You can find out more over at lumangelo.com, but please stay tuned to my profile on Facebook and Twitter for a live announcement about this year's event and what's going to make it different more special. Uh, Also, please go and check out the new logo store over at www.radio.com if you want t-shirts, mugs, hats, hoodies, sweatshirts, 
uh, iPhone cases, you can visit shop.wdwradio.com. Thanks again to all the members of the WDW Radio Nation who jo- and the new members who join the hundreds of you who are part of the Nation family, including some new and longtime members like Angelo and Lori Oliveri, Terry Doherty, Melanie Jones, Mark, Nicole Ostrowski, it's Nikki Ostrowski, <laughs> Justin Boyd, Amy Ferguson, and John J. Smith. I sincerely appreciate all of you. And if you want to not only help the show, but also get exclusive rewards every month, like monthly scavenger hunts, access to our private Facebook group. We're going to do our next live video group call uh, coming up very, very soon. There's also special logo gear and T-shirts and backpacks and monthly care packages from the parks. You can find everything over at www.radionation.com. And don't forget that a portion of the proceeds does go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation through our Dream Team project. Don't forget that if you have a question you want me to answer on the air, you can email me, lou at www.radio.com, or if you want to leave a voicemail be heard on the air, call 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. You can connect with me on social. I am at Lou Mangiello everywhere, and obviously the Facebook page is facebook.com slash Radio. But as you know, I believe that nothing beats a handshake and a hug. Our next meet of the month is going to be this upcoming weekend, Sunday, February 26th at 6 p.m. at the Food Truck Park, of course, in Disney Springs, which is located between Bongos and Starbucks. It is right after all of the princess races and the fun and the festivity and the sweaty hugs will have been completed. Great way to just get together, say hi, come alone, bring the entire family. Everybody's welcome. It is, as always, completely free. Visit the events page over on our Facebook page for more information and to RSVP and also find out about other upcoming events like our cruises, something that we're planning for later on this summer, other events as well. I'm starting to say too much. Move on, Lou Mangiello. Also, speaking of other events, I do do some meetups and events on the road as I do travel to speak at uh, conferences and schools and at events. You can visit loumangelo.com if maybe I can come speak to your business, to your school, or work with you one-on-one or in the next uh, mastermind group that I am forming. Again, that is over at loumangelo.com. And thanks, as always, to Mouse Fan Travel, my official recommended travel provider. It's who I use because it's who I trust, it's who I love, and it's who I use You can visit them at mousefantravel.com. And Little Timmy Foster and Celebrations Magazine can be found over at celebrationspress.com. As always, my friend, and you, you are my friend, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, and I hope that you do, please let others know about it. Tweet out that you're listening. Share a link to this, or better yet, your favorite episode this week. Take a second, link to your favorite episode on Facebook, and please take 30 seconds to rate and review the show over on iTunes. It's incredibly helpful. Thanks to you, we have more than 1,200 reviews. We hit number two overall among all podcasts in iTunes last year. I want to thank some recent reviewers who says, this is now my favorite podcast. That's BD Snook 43 He says, over a year ago, I was listening to the Social Media Examiner podcast when Michael Stelzner, really good guy, uh, happened to be on about talking about Facebook Live, being a lifelong Disney fan. I checked out the podcast. Haven't stopped listening since. I drive for several hours a day, and this podcast helps fills up the drive time with interesting and fun subjects. WWE was my favorite of the dozen or so podcasts I listened to. Wow, thank you. Uh, now you've got seven, several hundred episodes to go back and listen to. The podcast helps anybody with any level of Disney knowledge learn new and unique info and facts. Amazing job. The best podcast around. Thank you so much, BD Snook. Uh, Janelle K says, uh, I am the walking partner for a fan who only gets to go every few years ago. So the podcast helps me from missing Disney too much with a weekly visit. Our next plan, our next trip is planned for 2019. And uh, I listen as I walk and I've managed to keep and lose off 20 pounds in 2016. Congratulations. Thank you so much for the Disney escapes. Uh, MJLG says, it is positively wonderful with a plethora of spectacular guests. There's no shortage of entertainment. Lou's not only a fun and fantastic host, but the positive energy is infectious and inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank all of you who have led, uh, left a review. If you want to find out exactly how to leave a review and get a link, you can visit www.radio.com slash iTunes. And finally, and again, most importantly, um, I, I cannot thank you again for taking the time to tune in, to be part of the show, to be part of the community, to be part of 
of the family. And I hope that you are taking steps and strides, however big or small they may be, uh, however frustrating and slow it may be going sometimes, to do what you love every single day. So go out and take that first step because once you overcome that one small fear about getting started, that's going to give you the courage to take on the next and the next and the next. And as a wise, wise man once said, always keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that you have your best week ever. So until next time, see ya. Hi, Lou. This is Emma Harmon from Tallahassee, Florida. And I was calling because I just listened to your podcast about listener questions from last week. I'm actually on a long run right now, training for the Princess Half Marathon in a couple weeks. And I wanted to respond to your question. Well, my favorite land in Walt Disney World has to be... Fantasyland. I just love it. Um, I just think it is so sweet and it's so fun um, and it brings me back because uh, I used to go to Disney World all the time with my best friends as I grew up in Orlando and we would just ride Fantasyland and over and over and over. And it was such a good time. Uh, and so I always have to go when I'm there. So thank you. Love your show. Keep up. Hope to see you in February. Thanks. Hello, hello. This is Becky calling. I just wanted to say I changed my mind about my favorite place in the Magic Kingdom. My favorite place is Adventureland. I love, I just love, except for the kids, I hate those, but I love how mysterious it is at night. I just love the feel of the Pirates of the Caribbean and the, the darkness of the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. And I just love the whole feeling of it. Thank you, Lou. Uh, oh, and uh, I'm working on those free cruises for those nation members, all right? Hello, this is Camille from Tucson, Arizona. It is Super Bowl Sunday 2017. I've been listening to your show for about a year and a half, and I'm actually catching up from episode zero, and I just listened to episode 200. So congratulations. I know you're much further than that, actually, in the current day. I figure I will give the show a call every 100 episodes and give you congratulations. Hope everyone's enjoying the Super Bowl. I took a 48-hour road trip to Disneyland, and I'm on my way home. It was so much fun. Lou, thank you so much for your great show. I just love all the information, all of your positivity, and I can tell from all of your guests and friends that appear on the show, too. You guys are just such a great group. I really appreciate everything you do, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Lou. This is your friend, uh, Kristen, from Chile, Ohio, and I just got done listening to your last show, um, show 473, I believe, the listener questions. Um, and uh, I was just calling to let you know that my favorite land has got to be Adventureland. Come on. It's so good. I could spend hours just around Pirates of the Caribbean itself. Um, that area and the music and the theming is so wonderful. And not to mention the Jungle Cruise with the new Skipper Canteen. You know, got that food in there, tying that whole story together. Uh, you could honestly spend a day in Adventureland not riding a, a single attraction and just look at the details. So wonderful. Um, and that has got to be why Adventureland is my favorite. I also just wanted to let you know that um, your show is, has really helped me uh, get through the last couple of weeks. I'm, I'm waiting to see if I've been accepted for the, the Disney College program fall 2017. I've got an audition coming up here in a, a month or two for entertainment. Um, and this has been a really <laughs> tough, anxious waiting period for me. So um, your show has brought that Disney magic and is helping me get through it. So uh, thank you for that. I, you know, love the show. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Have a, have a great day. You've got a friend in me. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back. She'll be back. I'm back. Hasta la vista, baby.